Hello! It's Wednesday, August 19th, and I am Ann Fenlison, one of the pastors of Trinity Lutheran Church in Long Lake, Minnesota. It's a congregation of the ELCA. Very glad that you're stopping by for just a, a few moments here today to talk about God and uh, other things. So uh, I just sort of want to backtrack to what I talked about on Monday, which was about hydration. I talked about hydrating our bodies, and I talked about um, hydrating our spiritual lives, our lives of faith, if you will. And I, uh, I had come out uh, this morning here, here into the sunroom with the intent of um, making some pesto today. I have a, a basil plant. Let me show you. This is not the one that I began the summer with. This is an entirely separate plant. And uh, I had come out this morning thinking I was going to just produce some pesto today and all of its branches were drooped. It was just drooped over. Um, I knew it would come back quickly if I put water in it, but obviously I had not hydrated my basil. So uh, it was just a, quite a pointed lesson for today considering I was talking about hydration uh, a couple days ago and I'm mentioning it again today. So bodies need hydrating, life needs hydrating uh, water. And our spiritual lives, our lives of faith need hydration too. And that we come to by prayer. So um, we tend to think of prayer, uh, I think we compartmentalize it. We put it into two categories, either it's individual prayer or um, corporate prayer, prayer in community. And I think sometimes we put uh, emphasis on one being more important than the other. We think that private prayer is the most important, but that's not true. Uh, first of all, God hears all prayers, and the Bible has many examples of prayer that happens uh, not privately, but in the context of worship uh, and in, in community. So it's also in community that we learn how to pray. Uh, we uh, are led in community, led in prayer, and the thing about that is when we pray alone, we are the ones that are starting everything, or we think that we are the ones to start that prayer, that the emphasis is a lot on ourselves. Um, like we have a need, we pray when we uh, need something, we pray when we're happy, and we are always kind of thinking that we have initiated that prayer, right? So it puts us sort of in a different category than when we go to church and we are being led in prayer. We don't initiate that, but we are being led in prayer. So uh, when we go to worship and someone stands up and leads the prayer, we are in fact responding to that prayer. And it also means that our egos, our identity uh, in a way can take a back seat, that we can be led instead of being the ones leading. And that has import an important part in our lives of faith too. Uh, also one thing about uh, participating in corporate or community prayer is that uh, when we're not the ones leading, we can just allow ourselves to be led. And what I mean by that, I've talked about this in past uh, videos with you, um, talking about being asked to lead prayer for a group, or if you step in and say, I'll, I'll pray. And part of the issues that come up when we do this is that as we pray, we start to analyze ourselves. We analyze our words, we analyze what we're saying, how we're saying it, we're judging, you know, is this good enough? And and we're always constantly, or not always, but sometimes we can be thinking that, wow, I'm not even feeling this prayer, whatever that means, to be honest. Uh, but so there's a lot that goes on in our heads when we are the ones that are doing that praying. I even find sometimes when I'm praying uh, by myself, uh, for instance, here at home, uh, my attention goes zipping off in another direction, right in the middle of my prayer. <laughs> and um, that's... You know, it tells me something about who we are and uh, how important it is to be led in prayer sometimes because sometimes we need it. We need someone to be there guiding us and uh, someone who we can focus on instead of trying to keep ourselves, uh, you know, from being distracted. So one of the things uh, I like about being in prayer in worship is that we are together in all of that. We have the prayers of the people that we say, well actually that we are being led in on a Sunday morning. That's when uh, the leader gets up and goes through those those litanies uh, that we usually say, Lord in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And that is a wonderful, effective community prayer that God is very much in. Uh, we may not feel like it. We may think that's one of the slow points of the service for it, but I encourage you to uh, reframe how you think about prayer like that. Uh, if I, I have known people who don't like saying the Lord's Prayer out loud with everyone else because it feels um, like it's just done by rote and that it doesn't mean anything. And if that's how you feel, that's okay. But I encourage you to take a step back and reframe that. What does that Lord's Prayer mean? Because those words we are saying, even though we're saying them together, we're saying them together as the body of Christ. And Martin Luther folks did a wonderful job of explaining the meaning behind the Lord's Prayer in his small catechism. It's always good to go back and review that. Oh yeah, this is what that means when we pray that in the Lord's Prayer. So no matter how we feel, whether we're feeling prayerful and spiritual, or whether our mind is, you know, squirrel, we're getting distracted, God is in that prayer. Always, we can be assured of that, and God is always listening to us pray. Prayer is so important to our lives of faith, is what hydrates us in our faith. It's just as important as when we hydrate our bodies with water. So folks, go into this day and pray. As Paul said, uh, rejoice always and pray without ceasing. What does that look like to enter into a day and pray all the time? might be worth just trying today. All right, thanks for stopping by. Really great having you here, and I will see you at church. Bye-bye.